Hey, you don't have a right to complain. You're a pathetic excuse of a woman who can't even cook or clean or even get pregnant. The least you could do is take care of my parents. We finally did it, Mikiel. Huh? You what? We're finally pregnant. I'm going to have a baby. Jeez, your timing couldn't be any worse, Chadako. What are you talking about? I thought that you'd be happy to hear the good news. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, I want a divorce. What? My name is Shariko Saiki. I'm 35 years old and I'm a single mother. But I'm also very focused on my career. And I work at a publication company as an editor. I'm living alone with my newborn daughter. So I have to admit that times are a little tough, but I don't regret any of it. I'm making the most of the life I'm living right now. To be honest, anything would be better than the time I spent living at that house. But I can safely say that my current lifestyle is like paradise on earth. Let's drink to our 8 year anniversary! Cheers! I can't believe it's already been 8 years! We met first 10 years ago and we got married 2 years after that. Feels like it was yesterday. Man, time really does fly. Yeah, you're right. Hey, Mikio, there's actually something I wanted to talk to you about. What is it? It sounds pretty serious. Well, I was actually thinking about resigning from my job. What? You're gonna resign? But I thought that you said that it was the perfect job for you. You said that you were born to become an editor. What happened? Yeah, but I've been going to work and going to the clinic to get fertility treatments, haven't I? So I've had to take a lot of time off work, too. I thought that you said that everyone at work was happy to cover for you and that they understood why. Have you had any problems with someone? No, everything's fine with the people at work, but I've been having this treatment done for almost two years, and nothing's gone right yet. Even my doctor's been telling me that I won't see any positive results until I create a stress-free environment for my body. She told me that it might be best that I take some time off of work so that I can focus completely on having a baby. Right, I guess that's true. But what are you planning to do after you resign? I think I can afford to pay the bills and stuff alone, but I mean, we gotta think about what we might be doing after we finally have the baby. I think it might be a little bit tight if we don't have your, your income. I'm thinking about doing some writing work from home. I've already been given a few projects from my manager at work, so I can earn a little money through that. Really? That's amazing. That's what I expected from my super editor wife. Thanks. <laughs> but I'm planning on making the housework and my treatment my first priority. I'll do as much writing as possible, but not so much that it'll be a burden. Yeah, that should be fine. If that's still what you decided, then I don't have any complaints. But I'm still a little worried about the money after all. Fertility treatment costs a lot, and we don't want to use any of our savings if you're resigning. I wonder what we should do. Don't worry about that. I'm going to use my severance package to pay for everything. Wow, that's exactly what you would expect from a major publication company. Oh, stop it. That's the reason why I've worked so hard up until now. All that effort has finally paid off. For a while after we got married, neither of us was interested in having kids just yet, and we were both working hard at our careers. We would spend our days off going on holidays abroad and enjoyed our time alone. In the beginning, we just wanted to treasure the time we had together. But five years after we got married, when we both decided it was time to start a family, we had a lot of difficulty getting pregnant, no matter what we tried. Then, just as we were about to face our six-year anniversary, I began getting fertility treatments, hoping that it would change our chances of having a child. I had been visiting the clinic on a regular basis while going to work and doing the chores for the past two years. But eventually, that all took a toll on my body. Working as the editor of a magazine is a pretty tough job, and I realized that it was too draining to try and juggle everything all at once. I made up my mind to resign from my job and focus on my health for the fertility treatment. And then, just one month after I had resigned from my job, one day, out of nowhere, my mother and father-in-law came to visit our house. Akio, Misako, it's so lovely to see you. What? Akio, what happened? Why are you in a wheelchair? Are you okay? He had a little accident. He fell over and broke his leg, so he's going to be in a wheelchair for a while. Are you okay? We came because he's not okay. Didn't you hear anything from Mikio? I thought he would have told you by now. What? We're both going to stay here until my husband recovers from his injury. So I'm relying on you to take care of us. What? You're staying here? Seriously? Both of you? Here? Of course. Do you really think that I can take care of my husband all by myself? He needs a lot of help around the house, and I'll get hurt if I do everything alone. Chadako, I'm really sorry for the trouble. Well, you say that, but we don't have any spare rooms in this house. Where are you going to stay? What are you talking about? We can use your office. 
Mikio told us that we can use it however we like. Everything's already been decided with Mikio, so you can't complain. We're staying, whether you like it or not. Wait a minute. I still haven't. Oh, and I want a grilled eel for dinner. Make sure you prepare something. Chadako, I'm really sorry. Damn it! I'm no good at dealing with this woman. I can't get a single word in. I've never gotten along with my mother-in-law ever since Mikio first introduced me to her. She's arrogant, intimidating, she never listens to anything anyone says to her, and she's definitely the type of person to bully her son's partners if she's left alone with them. Hey, Mikio, your mom and dad turned up out of nowhere. Why didn't you tell me anything? What, really? They came earlier than I thought they would. Don't give me that. Why didn't you ask me before offering to let them stay? You haven't said anything to me. Does it really need to be discussed? My mom's too old to take care of my dad by herself. She needs her help. It's a matter of course that we do something for her. That doesn't mean that you can just call them over without telling me. I deserve to have a choice in the matter. I can't believe you would do this. Yeah, but you've already resigned from your job, you know? You got plenty of time on your hands to help them. If you're gonna stay at home all day, then the least you could do is help take care of my dad. Excuse me? Don't talk to me as if I've got nothing to do all day. I'm still going to the clinic for treatment, and I'm working from home from the office that your mom is trying to take over. You say that, but it's not proper work, is it? It's just like a blog or something. It doesn't matter what you write. What the hell? Is that seriously what you think of my work? Whatever, I'm not agreeing to this. Ask them to go home. I took this time off of work to focus on getting pregnant. Hey, I'm the breadwinner of this family, okay? I decided that they're staying and that's that. They're staying with us. You're not making any money, so you're just leeching off of me. So you don't have any right to complain, you know? So that's what you think of me right now? That I'm leeching off of you? You're pathetic, Mikio. I'm disgusted. Anyways, my dad's doctor said that he should recover within three months' time. It's not that long. Besides, we're going to be asking them for help when the baby is born, so we might as well keep this chance to thank them in advance. Your parents live too far away to make themselves useful, so it's only natural that my parents come first. Well, yeah, but you can't just... Then it's decided they're staying. Make sure you don't do or say anything rude to my parents, all right? Thinking back, that's probably when Mikio began to show his true colors. And I realized that the Mikio I had been seeing up until now was just a mask meant to deceive me. This grilled eel doesn't taste very good, does it? I'm a little disappointed. Oh, really? I found it at the supermarket in front of the station. I thought that it was a pretty good deal. What? You bought this at a supermarket? I can't believe it. You've got to buy eel from a fishery that specializes in eel. The eel they offer at the supermarkets aren't real, you know. What? Do you really think we have the money for that? It tastes good, so what's the problem? Sorry, Mom. I'll make sure she buys it properly from a fishery next time. Don't worry. I'm really sorry, Chattico. This miso soup doesn't taste very good either. How did you make it? Uh, I just poured the hot water. It's yummy instant miso soup from Mani Robo Soup Garden. I'll buy something else next time. What? It's instant? You don't make miso soup yourself? I can't believe it. Just how lazy are you? Jataco's not as particular about food as you are, Mom. Hey, I know. Why don't you learn how to cook from my mom while she's living with us? That way you can improve your cooking skills. What? What's wrong? I want you to be able to make the kind of food my mom made when I was a kid. That's true. I guess I'd better work on training you to become a proper housewife. Don't underestimate my 40 years of being a housewife myself. <laughs> You're going to learn from the best. Whatever. I'm happy enough with drinking this instant miso soup and focusing on my priorities. Mmm, yummy. How Chadako's done ever since we got married was focus on her career. So she's a terrible cook. She can't even prepare a proper lunch for me to take to work. Excuse me? Mikio, you've done very well bearing with her sloppy housewife skills. I'm surprised you haven't left her already. Yeah, I think so too. I'm glad that you'll be able to teach her how to cook though while you're here. I can't wait. I can't believe it. So this is what he thought of me all along? Just like that, I had to give in to the decision that my husband had made for my in-laws to come and live with us. I was completely against the idea, but the one good thing was that my mother-in-law was barely home. She would go out to eat and have fun with her friends on a daily basis, and she wouldn't come home until the evening when Mikio came home from work. Thanks to that, I didn't have to spend much time with her, and I didn't have to live in fear of her watching my every move. She didn't bully me as much as I had anticipated, and living with her turned to be a lot easier than I expected it would be. Chadako, I really am sorry for my wife's behavior. It's not your fault, Akio. You don't have to apologize for anything. I'm sorry that I can't make your stay more comfortable. I'm not used to caretaking. 
Don't worry, Chadako. You're doing what you can. Anyways, there's a black bag in the room my wife and I are staying in. The room that's supposed to be your office. Would you bring it to me? Uh, yeah, sure. I did as I was told, and brought the black bag that was my father-in-law had requested I bring. This bag, I want you to keep it somewhere safe for you to use in an emergency. You don't have to look at it right now, and I'd prefer that you open it up and use it when the time is right. When you've got no other hope, you know? Okay, I don't understand. But I'll take good care of it. I'll put it somewhere. Uh, thank you. I know that you must have a hard time dealing with my wife, but I'm grateful that my son married a person like you. I'm lucky, but I do feel bad that you've had to suffer so much because of my selfish wife and how selfish my son can be, too. It's enough that you look out for me, Akio. I'm grateful that I have a father-in-law like you. Shirako! Where are you, Shirako? Huh? Misako. I thought you went out for the day. Did something happen? What's wrong with me coming back earlier than I usually do? I'm free to come and go whenever I please. Anyway, I'm hungry, so hurry up and prepare lunch, will ya? Don't tell me that you haven't prepared anything yet. What were you doing while I was out? You didn't tell me that you were going to eat at home today. You usually eat out with your friends, so I haven't prepared enough to feed three people. What? You should have anticipated that I might come home. Fine. If you haven't made enough, then let's order some sushi. If you're going to pay for it yourself, then be my guest. I'm afraid we don't have that kind of money to order deliveries in this house. I'm already paying for my fertility treatment and saving money for when we finally have the baby. I can't waste money on luxuries like that. My god, just how useless are you? You can't cook, and you can't even have children without treatment. You can't call yourself a wife. Ugh, relax, Shirako, relax, relax. This woman, she just has to complain about every single little thing I do. <sighs> but stay calm, Shirako. Stress is the biggest enemy of getting pregnant. Oh, I've got a message from a friend. She's invited me to go out and eat. I don't need to eat at home after all. I'm going. Bye bye now. Uh, yeah, fine. This is how my mother-in-law has been treating me ever since she started living with us. She doesn't lift a finger and makes excuses every time I mention it. She's left taking care of her husband to me and does whatever she wants. As for me, I've been running around the house, doing the chores, getting some work done from home, taking care of my father-in-law and going to the clinic. To be honest, nothing had changed since I had resigned from my job. I began to wonder what the point was in me leaving my dream job when I still couldn't get pregnant. Mikio's attitude towards me had just gotten worse, and he's not helping me with anything. And then, three months later, Akio had recovered from his injury, and he could finally walk on his own after attending a rehabilitation course. One week after he'd been given the all clear from his doctor, he and my mother-in-law were due to return to their own home. But a certain incident made me question if that was possible. It's thanks to you that I've gotten all better, Chariko. Thank you. I'm glad that you're doing better, Akio. It's good to see you back on your feet. Hmm, all this walking has made me a little hungry. Is lunch ready yet? Lunch? But you just had lunch half an hour ago. Hmm, it's thanks to you that I've gotten all better, Chariko. Thank you, my leg feels so much better. Akio, hang on. Can I ask you something? Uh-huh. Chariko! Come here a moment. What's the matter, Misako? Do you know where Akio went? He's not here. Really? He was watching TV in the living room when I last saw him. Isn't he still there? I checked, but he's not in the living room. I can't find him anywhere. What? Do you think he went out without us realizing? Well, he's always enjoyed going out for walks. He'd probably gone to stretch his legs after spending so much time in a wheelchair. Then let's wait a little longer. He might come home in half an hour or so. We can go and search for him if he doesn't come back then. Yeah, I guess that's best. And then, one hour later... Hello, this is Shirako speaking. What? The police? The police? Uh, yeah, right. Is he okay? Really? Yeah. Is it Akio? Where is he? Understood. I'll be right there. Thank you so much. What happened? Tell me. Apparently, he was out on a walk and couldn't find his way home. He was walking around when the police found him and took him in. Oh, thank goodness. I'm glad he's okay. I wonder why he didn't tell us. He's not familiar with this neighborhood after all. He should be more careful. It's not just that. Apparently, he had a hard time telling them his own name when they called out to him. What? That doesn't make any sense. How could they have known to call us if he couldn't tell them his name? I've had a few moments when I've spoken to him, and he's repeated the same words over and over. He's become pretty forgetful, too. He'd start talking about something completely different in the middle of a conversation. You're kidding, right? That means... Yeah, I put a piece of paper with his name and our number written out in his wallet so that we can be contacted in an emergency. It looks like that was the right decision. It might be a while to take him to the hospital and have him checked up. We shouldn't leave things as they are. Yeah, you're right. 
As a result, we took my father-in-law to the hospital to get some brain scans to test him for Alzheimer's. In the end, we received a diagnosis from his doctor saying that he was suffering from mild dementia. I guess we don't have any other choice of my dad suffering from dementia. What do you mean? What choice? This means that we'll have to continue living with my parents. We don't have any other choice, do we? What? You want them to stay with us? Of course. You think that we can tell them to leave? How's my mom supposed to take care of my dad all on her own? She's too old for that. I'm not saying that she should take care of him alone. I'm saying that there are professional care homes meant to take care of people suffering from dementia. So you're telling me to just abandon my own dad? Why does sending him to a care home equal abandoning him? It's better for him to be put in the care of people who know what they're doing. Your dad might even be happier that way. He's always hated having to rely on us and even said that he didn't want to be an inconvenience. Quit complaining, Chattico. You can't even get pregnant. And you're not even working, okay? The least you could do is take care of my parents. What did you say? I was at my limit. I couldn't take Mikio's treatment of me, and I couldn't agree with the way he thought about me either. He was a completely different person to the man I had married. But I couldn't help but feel guilty for not being able to have a baby. And I felt like I couldn't argue back to what Mikio was saying. I was so frustrated with myself and with Mikio that I ended up in tears every time we spoke. But there were some upsides. One day after an argument with Mikio, I got a phone call from a number that I hadn't seen in a while. This phone number? It must be. Two years later, we had sold my in-law's property, and it was decided that we would have our house reformed to build a room especially for my father-in-law. It was set in stone that my husband's parents would come to live with us, and I had no say in the matter. For that entire time, I had been rushing around to get infertility treatments to complete the housework and to take care of my father-in-law and had no time to stop and relax. I just wanted a baby. The hope I would someday be a mother was the only thing that pushed me to keep on moving. And then, 10 years after Mikio and I had gotten married, my wish had finally taken form, and my effort had been rewarded. We finally did it, Mikio! Huh? You what? We're finally pregnant! I'm going to have a baby! Jeez, your timing couldn't be any worse, Chattico. You're too late. Uh, what are you talking about? I thought you'd be happy to hear the good news. We've been married for 10 years. We've been waiting for this day for a long time. Yeah, sorry about that. I want a divorce. What? Divorce? What are you talking about? The truth is, I've already got a baby on the way. What are you talking about? You're gonna make me repeat myself? Duh. I'm going to have a baby. I've already been going out with another woman for the past six months and she's already pregnant. Another woman? From six months ago? Yeah, I'm gonna marry her, so I want a divorce. You all agree to it, won't you? You've been cheating on me while I've been taking care of your elderly parents? You're kidding, right? Do you know how busy I've been? You don't have any rights to complain, Chattico. Just who do you think has been paying the bills, paying for the food you eat and all that? Just shut up and sign the papers. I don't? Ha, fine. I'll give you your divorce. Go marry whoever you like. But you'll regret this. You'll wish you never said that. Why would I regret divorcing you? <laughs> I'm warning you. I'm going to make you pay. You owe me compensation and child support. You're not getting away with this that easily. Why should I pay compensation? Of course you should. Your affair is the reason why we're getting divorced, so you're the one that's at fault. Besides, I spent a fortune on getting fertility treatment, and I've worked my ass off to take care of your dad for you while you've been sleeping with another woman. I'm not going down without a fight. I'll see you in court, and you'll pay for everything. You've always been an annoying woman, but this, oh, this takes the cake. She must have realized that we were fighting because my mother-in-law came to Mikio's defense and began insulting me too. I packed up some things and returned to my parents' house to tell them everything that had happened. As soon as he heard that I wanted to take Mikio to court, my dad called up a skilled lawyer that he knew and introduced us. Thanks to the lawyer that defended me, I was able to demand a large amount of compensation from Mikio. After winning in court, I waited for a chance to get into the house when Mikio and his mother were out and moved all of my things out so that I could take them back with me to my parents' house. Even though he needed care, my father-in-law had been left at home all alone. Akio, I'm sorry that I couldn't stay with you until the end. I don't want you to be alone, but... Chattico, did you take the black bag with you? Oh! It should be in the same place, so make sure that you take it with you. Thank you for taking care of me for so long. I'm really grateful that you were my caretaker in the end. I hope that you'll find happiness away from Mikio. It was the first time he had spoken so clearly in a long time. He thanked me and reminded me of the bag he had given to me such a long time ago. I did as he said and opened it up when I got to my parents' house. I was shocked when I saw what was inside, that I was speechless, and even forgot to breathe. And then, when the realization hit me, I cried and cried. Akio, thank you. 
Oh my god. <laughs> Just like that, I began a new chapter in my life, living at my parents' house. I returned to the writing work I had put aside for so long and gave birth to a healthy baby girl. Just a few months later, I had been enjoying my new life, balancing my responsibilities to work and as a single mother, when one day... You finally answered! Hey, Chadiko, it's me, remember? It's me! I'm sorry, I don't know anyone named me. <laughs> don't be silly, Chadiko, it's me, Mikio. You haven't forgotten me, have you? Oh, Mikio. Nice talking. Goodbye. Wait, 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 uh, don't hang up. How's the baby? Uh, which was it? She's fine, but whether she's fine or not has nothing to do with you. Don't say that, come on. Uh, what do you say about getting us back together? I mean, you must miss me, right? We can be together again. What? She needs a father. I'm her father. I should be there with her. Let's get back together, okay? Who do you think you are? She's better off without you. We don't need you. Come on, please. I'll change. I won't hurt you ever again. Please, just come back and live with me. I want to be with you and the baby. I've put my dad in a proper care home, so you won't have to take care of him anymore. You won't have to do as much work as you ever did before. I'm never going to live with you, even if you offer to pay me. Don't call my number ever again. Wait, Chariko. Hey, don't say that, Chariko, please. I knew exactly why Mikio had been begging me to come back to be with him. I had heard everything from a certain person who had been supporting me. I knew what had happened to Mikio after I left thanks to the person who had called me all those months ago. This phone number, it must be... Hey, Chariko. How are you doing? It's been a while. Ataru, what's up? It's nothing big. I just heard from my mom that Uncle Akio was diagnosed with dementia and that you're taking care of him at Mikio's house. I'd heard that you resigned from work to focus on getting infertility treatment a while ago, so I was wondering how you were doing. You must be under a lot of pressure. I was just a little worried. This is Ataru Yamamoto. He's Mikio's cousin and he's three years older than me. Unlike Mikio, he's sweet, kind, and actually thinks about other people. Just like Ataru had said, I had been under a lot of stress when he had called me, and I had been bottling up a lot of frustration. I ended up complaining and telling him everything that I had been going through. When he found out... What? You're kidding me, right? What the hell is Mikio doing? You should get a divorce already. What is the point in staying with him? But he's right that it's my fault that we can't have any children. How is that your fault? That's no one's fault, okay? What can you do about that? You're doing what you can by getting treatment for it, and but uh, if you really want to have children that desperately, then I think it's worth the effort you're putting in. But if you find that it's too tough to stay with Mikio and you want to get a divorce, then I'll do what I can to help you, okay? Yeah. Thank you, Ataru. Thank you for your offer. After that, I spoke with Ataru and decided that I really did want to have children, and that I would try a little longer with Mikio. And then, when I found out that I was pregnant, I let Ataru know as soon as possible, and he was really happy for me. He was even happier than Mikio, but we had already started talking about getting a divorce, and there was no going back. I think that you made the right decision to divorce him, Chariko. But I'm still worried about leaving Akio behind. I'm scared that his dementia will only get worse. Don't worry about that, okay? My parents and I have been really worried about my uncle Akio for a while, and we can't leave him to Mikio and his mom. You can leave him to me, so don't worry. I knew that I could leave everything to Ataru when he reassured me. So I was able to divorce Mikio without any regret or feelings of guilt. And then, what happened to him from there? <laughs> well, I heard all of that from Ataru. It's a pretty pathetic story. Apparently, the woman that Mikio had gotten pregnant and remarried after divorcing me was a 21-year-old hostess. After I had left, she had been forced to take care of all the housework and the care I'd been doing for my father-in-law. Mikio had also forced her to deal with Misako all on her own too. And then, one day, all of that pressure caused Mikio's new wife to explode. She lost her temper and... Don't screw with me, Mikio! Why the hell do I have to take care of your old mom and dad? Take care of yourself, Grandma! What do you mean, why? It's your job to take care of us. I've had enough! I want a divorce! Hey, our baby was born just a few months ago. You can't leave. You need to help raise our baby. I can't do it alone. You know what? I'll tell you the truth. This isn't your baby. The father is someone else. What? When did I ever tell you that he was yours? I only said that I was pregnant, you idiot! You're lying. Uh, did you trick me? I can't believe it! I didn't have to do anything. You were stupid enough to assume that he was yours. You're kidding! How could you lie to me? I didn't know who the father was, but I needed someone to support me financially. You gave me the perfect chance to use you to give birth to my baby safely. I just told you that I was pregnant because you were an office worker with a stable income. And I have to take care of this noisy old woman? 
Not only that, I find out that you're paying compensation and child support to your previous wife. You don't have any money at all. Why the hell should I stick around in a house like that? I'm leaving. Damn you, get out! Just a few months after remarrying, his second wife had demanded a divorce. Apparently, Mikio had taken her and the father of the baby to court to demand compensation, but he was also found at fault for not telling her about the money he owed as compensation and child support to me, and about the care that his father needed because of his dementia. That dishonesty had created a pretty complicated situation in court, so it's not going as well as he anticipated. By the way, Ataru didn't know that Mikio had gotten remarried, and by the time he had prepared a care home for Akio to stay at, Mikio had already remarried and gotten divorced in the space of a few months. So he was pretty shocked to find out what had been happening at Mikio's house since we had divorced. Why didn't you hurry up with moving dad into a care home, Atareo? It's your fault my new wife left me. If dad had been put into a care home before she moved in with me, she might not have demanded a divorce. How the hell should I know? You're an idiot. It's not my fault that she got sick of you and left. Now you know just how much Chadako had to endure over the years, and how hard she worked just so she could get pregnant. You deserve to be alone for the rest of your life. Uh, Chadako, I miss her so much. Ataru, come on in. Hey, how are you? It's a good thing that you managed to find your own apartment. Yeah, I felt that it would be much better to move back to the city if I wanted to get back to working at my old company. I want to find a good kindergarten to leave my daughter to as well since I'm a single mother. But don't pressure yourself too much. If you ever need any help or even need me to babysit for a few hours, I would be happy to help. I live pretty close by, so I can get there within minutes if you call. A year had passed by, and I had moved back to the city so that I could return to my job at the publication company. Of course, I intended to balance raising my daughter and work, so I organized my schedule with my manager so that I could spend half my time working from home and only go to the office once or twice a week. I've been working overtime less, so my income has gone down in comparison to when I was working full-time. But that's no problem for me. I'm earning enough to live happily with my daughter. Not only that, I had the black bag that my father-in-law left for me. Inside the bag were the documents and details for a bank account that he had made for me in secret. When I checked how much was kept in the account, I found that it had over $50,000 saved up. And he had even left a letter for me in the bag, written before he had been diagnosed with dementia. Chadako, I'm really sorry about how horrible my wife and son have been to you. You never deserved all the treatment they've been giving you. These past few weeks, I've felt that my thoughts and memory haven't been as clear as they used to be. And I have a feeling that I have a lot of loss of clarity and that's just gonna trouble you even more. You'll have a lot more to deal with once I forget who I am. That's why I want to give you this, okay? I want to thank you in advance while I still know what I'm doing. I've created this account without my wife and son knowing, so I want you to use this money when you need it, okay? Don't tell them anything so that they won't try and take it from you. This is all for you and only you, okay? So use it how you wish. Akio, thank you so much. Thank you. I'll make sure to visit you at the care home when I next get a day off. Hey, I bet you just thought that you want to go and visit Uncle Akio, huh? Am I right? What? How did you know? It's written all over your face. <laughs> I haven't told Aunt Misako or Mikio where Uncle Akio's staying, so you don't gotta worry about bumping into them. But I'll go with you when you visit, okay? Just in case. So you can call me when you've decided on a day and I'll make sure that no one troubles you. Yeah, I will. Thank you so much. You've done a lot for me these past few months. I really am grateful to you. Ever since I was free to Mikio and his mother, I've been balancing my career with raising my baby daughter, and also been going out to have coffee with Ataru every now and then. It's been a long time since I've had fun like this, and I'm enjoying the distance between us, and I don't mind us getting closer, I think.